So I've been asked a few times, like, what is our loadout? What do Tina and I take when we backpack? Now, I haven't done that yet. A few reasons for that. This isn't really a gear review channel. When I get gear that works, I stop getting new gear. I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm a gearhead. Buying new gear is really fun, but like many of us, I only have so much money, so <laughs> I can't buy every single shiny object that I want. So I get gear that works, I stick with it. And the last reason is this. That's the list of gear that we take. Yeah, two pages. We are not ultralight backpackers. That being said, I'm gonna try to get through this relatively quickly before I run out of light. And I'll put information down in the description. If you have any questions about the gear, just let me know in the comments. So item number one, backpacks. Tina has a Osprey Aerial 75 liter. I have a Gregory 75 liter. I've had an Osprey before, but it was smaller. 75 liters, ridiculously large, but you've seen the list. There's lots of stuff on it. I really love Osprey and Gregory. Nothing bad to say about the packs. They're expensive. Yes, you pay for it, but they last forever. Had them for years. They work great. Next up, hiking poles. My most disappointing purchase ever. Decided I needed to get some fancy cork handle black diamond ones cost like $150. I left them at a trailhead and forgot about them. Somebody else has some really nice hiking poles. Now I replace those with, they're called Trail Buddy. They've got the cork handle. They work fantastic. I, I just, you know, the, the Walmart ones, the Black Diamond, the Trail Buddy, they all seem the same to me. They're hiking poles. When we started backpacking, we bought all cheap gear and used gear that we had from when we were teenagers and went out and immediately were like, this backpack is killing my shoulders. These shoes are killing my feet. And then you prioritize what you upgrade. And at the end of it, what you'll find is some of the cheap things that you had at the beginning, you still have at the end. You don't have to spend a fortune. And I always feel like that's the best way to pick out backpacking gear. Start with what you can borrow, what you can afford, cheap or not, just get out there, plan an easy trip, so you don't have like 170 miles left to go to get home and you, all your gear sucks. But plan an easy trip, try it out, see what works and what doesn't and upgrade as you can. So for sleep gear, we have uh, Sea to Summit pillows. I don't know the exact type of them. We've got a few of them. I like the bigger ones. I've tried a few other ones and I just don't see a huge advantage one way or another. So kind of stick with what works. What I've spent a ton of money on is sleeping pads. Started out with a yoga mat because, I don't know, I was going to do yoga or something. I didn't know what I was doing. Bought a pretty expensive set of sleeping mats. Wasn't super comfortable. Bought another more expensive set of sleeping mats. And what happened is Tina and I would go backpacking together and I would invariably, because I like her better than she likes me, so I scoot over to her side of the bed, I would always end up between the two pads, sleeping on the floor of the tent. Well, she fixed that. She went to Big Agnes and found their twin mattress. It's called uh, Big Agnes Q-Core XLS. It's basically almost the size rolled up as one of the other ones that I had, only it fits both of us. Super comfortable it doesn't pull apart so I end up sleeping on the tent floor so love that sleep system Big Agnes is an incredible brand and their sleep system is genius they have this traditional sleeping mat but their sleeping bag um, Big Agnes Sentinel 30 degree double is what we have we've also got the same sleep system as a single which is what I'm using tonight because I'm out by myself but it has these just like a fitted sheet it fits around the mattress so your sleeping bag doesn't slip off it sticks to the mattress Love Big Agnes. So for water, a long time ago I was looking into water systems and the article I read said that UV was great. So I got the Camelback All Clear. We've had that for years now. It works great. I'm not switching anytime soon, but the problem with it is it's electronic. Electronics need to be recharged. They can break, they can just stop working. Keep in mind these never have, but 
you never know. I, it's, I feel like they're waterproof. We have gotten water splashed on them. I haven't dropped one in a creek or anything. That could be an issue. Also, the bottles, you have to have the Camelback bottles that go with the UV system. Oh, and those bottles, if you put them in the dishwasher, the, the drying cycle will melt them and deform them, and then you have to buy new $20 bottles. And, you know, you just fill them up with water, screw the top on, push the button. 60 seconds later, you've got clean water. It has to be clean water to go in. It, you know, it doesn't mechanically filter particulates out of the water. It just kills things so you won't get sick. And I think the system itself is around $100. So a lot of drawbacks, but it's always worked for us. I either go places with clean water sources so far or I bring water, so I haven't had an issue with it. I use a coffee filter sometimes if there's a little bit of sediment in the creek and pour through that into the all clear bottle. Don't have a problem with it. We do carry a Sawyer squeeze with us. I've used it like once. I've used a life straw also as a backup. Used that a couple of times. So it's nice to have that backup. What I'm thinking of doing is maybe trying a Sawyer squeeze moving forward just uh, to test out. They're super cheap. They do mechanically filter the water. Everybody seems to swear by them, so I don't know. Don't take my advice on water system, I guess. Now, a lot of times we also have water bladders when we hike. Sometimes I'll just have a water bottle if it's a short hike, but for backpacking trips, we use a Osprey 3 liter. You get the cheap kind, they usually leak, so we stick with Osprey. Those don't seem to leak, and if you've ever gotten somewhere and all your water is leaked out on your pack and it's soaking wet before you even get out of the, out of the truck, it's not a good thing it's worth the extra money. Also, sometimes carry these platypus collapsible water bottles. Use those a lot, they don't take up any space and they're really tough. They look like they'd break and poke holes, but we haven't had one leak yet. So for food, we've got a plastic knife, fork, and spoon set that Tina found on Amazon, I think. I don't even know, it doesn't have a brand name on it. So anything would work there. I'm thinking of downgrading to just a spork so it takes up less room. But again, you don't need to spend a lot of money on that. It's just got to get food from your bowl to your mouth. We have a jet boil. And I forget which one it is. I'll put it in the video. It works great. Don't get me wrong. But it's really expensive and it's kind of heavy and bulky. I had this no-name pocket rocket MSR thing that was tiny. Worked for years. Still works. Still have it. And it costs like 40 bucks. I think the jet boil is like 150 So uh, questionable if the jet boil is worth it or not i'm going to stick with it because i have it it works great one thing i will say i have gone out and hooked up one of those propane tanks and the tank didn't work it had a defective valve you might not i would have never thought that would have happened but now i take two propane tanks pretty much everywhere i go it, it's just something i would at least recommend that you try your propane tank before you go out because if you get a defective valve i guess you just don't eat you borrow somebody else's stove that would suck so we also have these cheap cups i think these came with a coleman cooking kit and we've just kept them forever. They work with hot coffee, they work with cold stuff, so it, it's great for coffee in the morning. Just, yeah, not much to it. I think this kit costs like 20 bucks and we just kept these. And I keep that all in the netting that the original kit came in with a measuring cup because our dehydrated meals often call for stupid things like 172 milliliters of water. So I've got the measuring cup, a shot glass for obvious reasons. And I like to just have a towel in there. It keeps things from rattling around. And it's also nice to just rinse and wash stuff, stuff out. Now, yes, you could cut down on that. Thought about this a lot. You, We could probably get some kind of a cup or cooking system that has the milliliters or ounces marked on it. Shot glass, eyeball it. But it works for us, doesn't weigh much. That's kind of why we got 75 liter packs is we fill them. We'll bring paper plates paper bowls. It's just easier using a bowl or a plate, I feel like. Beverages often bring vodka, Crystal Light, like the mango peach tea. Mix that together with some water. Does the trick. In the morning, Starbucks coffee packets. Tina likes the fancier, sweeter kind. I just take my coffee black, so uh, whatever works for you there. 
I've also been using Zipfizz, but I prefer these noon tablets. I like them for the electrolytes while you're hiking. They also come in caffeinated. I like that for an extra boost too sometimes. You can get them with, without the caffeine also, like the support one. Just better than drinking regular water sometimes, I feel like. So for safety, we got a med kit. This is just a med kit that we picked. It's been empty, refilled, stuff added to it. I could do a whole thing on that. It's way overkill, I know. I'm not gonna go into detail there. You can get those anywhere. Customize it for what makes sense for you. So for headlamps, we just have Black Diamond. They're waterproof. I don't know if they have a specific model number or anything. I gave mine to somebody who didn't have one, so I have a newer one than Tina. I like the newer one, got more settings on it, but you know, nothing special. It is nice to have one that's waterproof, just in case, because headlamp is pretty important. So those headlamps aren't rechargeable. I kind of like that better. I just bring some spare batteries if we're gonna be out there for a while, and at least enough for one, and hopefully between the two of them, we'll get through the trip. We did have a rescue link, personal locator beacon, and it is a non-subscription based PLB. You buy it, you spend the 250 or whatever it costs to buy, and then you don't have to pay a fee, you know, every month. You register it when you get it, you push the button, and then I got, I've never done it, so I guess you cross your fingers and hope there's nothing that says, hey, you, you know, the rescue's on their way or anything, it's just push a button, and they're supposed to go to your coordinates from that. Now we have a Garmin InReach Mini, it links to your phone with a app. I really like the thing. It is a subscription. It's 12 bucks a month is the minimum, and that's what we get. And, you know, like I'm out here by myself today. It's nice to be able to communicate, and I can send a message to Tina and say, hey, I'm at camp. Everything's cool. That sort of thing. She knows I'm, you know, okay. It also has the button you push for SOS to get rescue. But, um... I really like the Garmin. We've had it for a while. If you saw the four pass loop video, that's what we got it for. When Tina tried four pass loop solo, she needed it. She used it. It saved her ass. Yeah, if you really get into this stuff in the back country, it's nice to have. So we also use these cheap Walmart ponchos. They're great. They fit over your backpack, so they keep everything dry. We have had to use them before. Thinking about buying these cheaper ones that I saw in a video, a lot smaller, a lot lighter, for an emergency type thing, you know, I have rain gear that I'll take if I know it's going to rain, but just as an emergency thing, if you think it might rain, would much rather have the one use but tiny and light thing than the big heavy one we have. Last thing for safety, and this may divide some people, I have a gun. I have it with me now. I'm out here solo. Honestly, I have not seen a mountain lion in the backcountry. I'm sure plenty of them have seen me and they don't want anything to do with me. But if a place they would live, this is it. And yeah, I know logically on the surface the chances of, of anything or anyone causing me any problems is very minuscule, but it makes me feel better. That's my philosophy for a gun. You want to take one? If it makes you feel better, do it. If you think it's stupid and you don't need it to feel safe, don't take it. I don't take this thing on plenty of trips. So, um, yeah, for that, it is just whatever makes you comfortable. Page two, miscellaneous items. So we have gloves. Haven't been taking those a lot recently. They are good when you're gathering firewood. For firewood, I'm a big fan. Just break it over a rock. Don't try and chop it with an ax. Don't try and cut it with a saw. That takes way too much energy. Just one hit most of the time over a nice rock, splits it in half, good to go. Side note, don't just smack it up against a rock wall like at face level because it can break off and come right back and hit you right in the eye. Tina knows that from experience. <laughs> anyway, so charger, I have two different chargers. Um, don't have a whole lot of things that need, well, it all depends on the trip and what you need. I have GoPros, I have camera batteries, I have the Camelback all clear. We have iPhones. So I bought a solar thing. I think I tried it once. It didn't charge very well. I have an Anchor Power Core 10,000 and a Zero Lemon 30,000. 30,000 says Ma here. I don't know what Ma stands for. I'm not an electrician or typist. So it probably meant milliamps. 30,000 will charge stuff for days. 
it is heavy. It is almost like carrying a brick around. The 10,000, much smaller, doesn't charge as much, obviously. Something that I've recently started bringing with me is a shoelace. If you ever had a shoelace break out here, it kind of sucks. So it's like, this doesn't weigh anything. This is simple. So throw a shoelace in. You know, have you ever heard, don't pack your fears? I feel like at least one of these pages is probably just fears. We way overpack. Anyway, I have a microfiber towel that is nice to have, dries really quick. Paracord, you have to hang your food depending on where you are. Bug spray, bug face net. Again, it depends on the conditions. If the bugs are bad, face net spray is helpful. Always bring hand sanitizer. It's just nice, nice to have clean hands before you eat. Toothpaste and toothbrush. Sometimes it depends. We've been married a while, so uh, I am what I am. She's stuck with me regardless of how disgusting I am in the morning. But toothpaste, toothbrush, better human if you bring it. And the last miscellaneous item is trash bags. Usually bring one or two and just, you know, take your junk out. So that's what we do. Throw all their trash into it, tie it up, carry it out on our backpacks. So for fire, got these cheap little fire starter things. Get them from Walmart. They used to have smaller ones, which I loved. Whatever, who cares? I like to have this fire starter. I can start a fire without one, but it's just nice to have. I have had conditions where everything was a little wet and I was glad to have them. But um, bring that, bring a lighter, a spare lighter in the med kit, and then biking axe. And I just have a biking axe because it's cool looking. All right, about done here. So now we're into luxury items. These don't go on every trip. Obviously this entire loadout, it depends on the trip. We have camp lights. I forget the brand names. I forget which one we like better. Sometimes, especially if you can't have a fire, it's good for morale that just have camp lights. Uh, we have hammocks. If there's a lot of trees, we bring these hammocks. They're Eno Sub 7. They're tiny, they're strong, they're awesome to lay in. I usually say I don't want to take the weight, even though it weighs nothing. And then we fight over the hammock that she carried. So Eno Sub 7 hammocks, they're awesome. Not to camp in, but to relax at camp. Now those require a lanyard system. I've bought them separately for one and I bought a kit for the other one. I highly recommend you get a kit that's made for this. It packs up so much nicer. The ones I bought separate, you just take this wad of lanyard and throw it in your backpack. It's a mess. It does the job. But get the kit. Another thing, if you can have the hammock, you don't need this, but I'm using one. I'm sitting on one right now. Camp chair. They're nice. Man, they're big and heavy. So this was a short backpack and it's a luxury item that I can afford to carry for a hike this easy, but a lot of times I leave this at home. Tina brings hers a lot more. I'm really jealous when she has a camp chair and I don't, but man, one of the heaviest things in my backpack and biggest. Lastly, camera gear. I don't even want to get into that. I have GoPros, batteries, tripods, Canon EOS R, microphones, just all sorts of stuff. That's a fun extra thing. Could be it's an entirely different video, but you're here for the camping gear, so you don't care about that. And yeah, that's it, that's all. That's all we bring. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But uh, you know, there's a couple of nuggets of wisdom in there that are things that I learned over the years, and some of you asked for it, so there's the video. That's what's in our backpacks. Thanks for watching. All right, forgot a couple of things. Don't know how that's possible with, you know, so few items. First, obviously you need a tent. Uh, Tina and I have a lot of tents. Most of them are cheap. They're either Ozark Trail, which is the Walmart brand, or they are Coleman, which makes, you know, like a, a decent tent for 40, 50 bucks. But when we backpack, we stick with Big Agnes. Now, I feel like this is where you get good return for spending a lot of money. They're just, they're awesome tents. I'll put the kind that we have here. When both of us go out, we take a three person. When one of us goes out, we take a two person because we need that extra space to put all this crap that we take. It's just nicer to have it in the tent. Last thing is GPS. 
We use Gaia GPS, which is an app, works on your iPhone, works fantastic. Used it since it came out and not needed anything else. The Garmin does do that as well, but I haven't even tried it because I haven't needed anything but Gaia. Now that's it. This is why I'm not a gear review channel. I know how to walk to places, so I'll stick to that. Except when I don't. Do you need a titanium spork? I would argue that no. You could get a 50 cent. Uh, sometimes we bring a tarp if it's going to be wet. Set down. I don't bring a tarp. What is this on here for? Oh my god, this thing just keeps going. In case you're wondering how in the world you can manage to make sure you bring that much crap and don't forget something, I use a spreadsheet. I'm an engineer. What can I say? I like spreadsheets. So I just have everything listed, listed by the type of camping. It's, it's way too in-depth unless you're the spreadsheet geek like I am. And I just use that and check everything off as I go and pack for the trips. I still leave things sometimes, but um, more often than not, I get everything. And now I'm done. You helping out? Always. <laughs>